so my uncle and auntie both played. They both played for um, for England. So obviously some high caliber there. Um, and then mum played for a local club and did pretty well as well. Sort of worked her way through, um, sort of like to England Academy. So she did all right for herself. I think she actually always blames it on me because she fell pregnant with me, um, just on her so sort of when she was coming up. So it's always my fault. So yeah, no r rugby family, and I think it, it must have been destined. To be safe, though, to make sure you found a sport that you loved, did your parents send you along to the obligatory ballet, swimming, netball, tap dance, pottery lessons? Um, so I actually did ballet for quite a bit. How was that? Uh, interesting. Interesting, to say the least, is mm -hmm. what it was. Um, I actually... I, my parents put it nicely, but I'm pretty sure I got kicked out of my ballet, ballet classes. We were doing, obviously, shows and stuff, and I'd just be quite literally away with the fairies and everyone's trying to be nice and flowy and I'm being an elephant in the corner is what I was described as. So. You were not. As a child described yeah. as an elephant in the no, corner? No, no, it was in last one my dad called me or mum. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. the ballet tutor. No, not the ballet tutor. Um, but I also think I, I still wanted to do it because my nan used to pick me up um, and she always used to feed me after, always used to give me like chocolate bars and stuff. So I think I wanted to just do it because she'd give me... Yeah. Treats after. But then you found rugby, or rather rugby found you, mm. and it has been a pretty meteoric ascent ever since. I mean, you were 18 and scoring for England yeah. at international level. Do you ever pinch yourself and think, how on earth did I get here? Uh, yeah, I did at the time, because I, I, I yeah, <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, at that point in my life, I didn't think that I would be where I was, um, and I was probably, um, only there because of because of injuries and, and I've, I've never hidden from that and neither has anyone else it was I was there for my first two caps because there wasn't anyone else quite literally so um, for me that first cap was really special because I got it but for me when I started getting selected because of um, because of my ability and uh, made my way into the team because on the back of performances and um, and stuff like that is, is when, for me, it, it became really special for me because I'd, I'd worked for it. Do you think that that opportunity, which presented itself through injuries, the serendipitous nature of your call-up, is that what enabled you to become the rugby player that you are now? Or do you think you still have got here, it just would have taken a bit more time? Maybe. I think it, it probably gave me the kick up, kick up the backside that I needed. Um, it allowed me to sort of see what, what I could do if... if I was a lot fitter and I and I lost a bit of weight, so I think it it definitely gave me that kick that that I, that I probably needed. And would I be here if I didn't have that kick? Um, I don't know. Um, I'd like to think that I would be, but you you never know. You talk about fitness, and I actually heard you say I think in an interview shortly after your debut that you felt like you were on the verge of death. Throughout. Yeah, <laughs> I literally I literally just had a had another interview where that was brought up. But I did think I was going to die, honestly. When you go from club to country, it, it is quite a large step step up for for us. Um, it's not; it's, it's still pretty pretty intense now, but um, it's definitely not as bad as what it was when I when I got my first cap. Uh, yeah, that was a pretty savage time for me. Ellis Genge, Carl Sinclair, Joe Marler. I think there's a lot of pressure on props these days with the standard that those guys are setting to be very funny, very entertaining. Is that something that you feel is the case? Um, to be big personalities. Yeah, I think I think it's fair to say that I've probably got I've probably got a big personality. Mm. Um, <laughs> but um, I I wouldn't want to sit here and say that I'm I'm funny and and all that. But I am. So. Go on. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, Do you have a go-to joke? What's your best one? No, liner? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that sort of joker. It's more off the back of of what people other people say or what other people do that I'll. Heavy sarcasm. Yeah, quite heavy. Mm. Yeah, quite heavy. You couldn't have one team full of, full of t 20 of me or one team full of 20, 20 of another person. It takes a lot of people to make up, make up a team. Would you want to play in a team of 20 Hannah Bottomans? No, I, I don't think anyone would. You could, <laughs> I think you could ask anyone that question and no one would want to. Who in the England team would make up the best team of clones of themselves? If you had to play for a, a team which was you and 14 other Emily Scarrett's or Poppy Cleals, who would you play with? I'd play with Poppy Cleal, just because we get on so well and um, 
yeah we get each other's humour, I think, is, is the big thing, because sometimes we're the only two people that laugh at our jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but you need someone to laugh at them, so, so yeah. Claire Balding recently said that she liked your jacket. She did, she did. That was a, honestly, that was a, that was a proud moment of mine. I didn't shut up about it. So I went to, me and a couple of the girls went to the BT Sport Awards, um, and I got caught in a little bit of a left-righty situation with, with Claire herself. Um, and I had a pretty flamboyant jacket on. And she went, oh, I love your jacket. And I, I didn't say anything because I was, I was starstruck. And I was like, oh, like, what do I say here? Um, so yeah, I, ended, I think I just said thank you. And she went on and presented the show. And obviously is very good at her job. So, um, and I managed to catch a photo with her after. Um, but yeah, it was, it, it, was, uh, it was nice to be complimented on the, on the jacket. By broadcasting sporting royalty. Yeah, proper. Well, now you've had some chance to digest it and undo all the starstruckness. Mm. Do you have a compliment you'd like to give back to Claire Balding? Just that I think you're an outstanding presenter and I would love for you to... Well, she's doing rugby league at the moment, isn't she? So maybe rugby union one day, who knows? Oh, who so. knows? That'd be fantastic. Now, Hannah, you don't lose very much for club or country. You've got a pretty good winning record. What do you like as a loser? Um, I don't like to find out is what I'd say but um, yeah it happens it does happen and you, those those losses sort of you just take it on the chin and if you've lost you you, you didn't deserve to win on the day and, and and that's the way of the world and that's the way it works and um, you try and get your revenge next time around uh, it, it gives you a lot to the good thing about losing is it gives you something to to go forward and to strive for sort of thing. You used to work a little bit as a painter decorator. Yes. And as you well know, we have a clapperboard with us yes, today, which has a, a blank side on it. I so can't paint. As in, like, I can't draw. That's not going to stop you trying. No, I, I, honestly, I can't draw. I can paint. I can, that was like straight lines and walls. I can't draw. If I were to give you 60 seconds. To draw. You've got to give me something to draw, though. That's because... absolutely fine. Can I have a self-portrait? No. <laughs> uh, uh, 60 seconds. Well, that's me on the board right <laughs> here. I don't know if you could see that. I don't know who's drawn this before, but that is my hair. Um, you know, that's, that's a llama. Yeah, well, it looks like me. We'll make it into a bit more of a... Um, the nose, we can just... I don't have many eyelashes anyway. But... Maybe some Crocs. You haven't even asked me about Crocs, and I love my Crocs. Tell me about your Crocs, well, then. I noticed you've got pins Currently, on them. so they're called gibbets, right? I'm holding them up and showing oh, us. I've got I'll bare hold, feet, though. That's hold okay. This. Okay. So these are my winter ones. and um, Winter Crocs? Yeah, so I've got, win I've got summer ones. Oh, so they're fur-lined? Yeah, fur-lined, right? I get taking the mick out of so much, but honestly, other shoe brands are available. But they have these really cool gibbets that you can stick in. At the moment, I've got these. I did have some more, but they just come off wherever I go. I don't know where they go. I had one on here. So which you're was leaving a trail of gibbets. Yeah, literally, and it was one of my dog as well. It was a really cute one, and I've lost it. These were gifted to me for Christmas. A fantastic gift, might I say. Hashtag gifted. Yes, um, and I've got a pair of red ones, but um, so that I wear those for Sarries. So now, any like if I get a new kit or whatever, I get it to go with the kit. I tell you what, when I first came to Sarries, Marley Packer used to absolutely take the mick out of me proper when she first came. Um, I, so my nickname used to be Crocs. So my nickname's Bots, mm -hmm. but they changed it to Crocs. Sounds proper, then. Yes. Um, a lot of people have sliders, etc. Mm -hmm. I have Crocs, and I get taken the mick out of. But I guarantee there's croc wearers out there that can back me up. I don't know how to draw a croc. Right, so Berners Llama is now me. I have got really small lips. I don't know if you can see they're really small. Um, and there's my croc. I'll sign it as well. 